everybody, Frank Finance here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna to be doing a stock analysis on British Petroleum, ticker symbol BP. All right, so for today's agenda, we're gonna look at the stock price history. We're gonna look at how oil prices correlate to the stock price. We're gonna look at BP's financials. I'm gonna give a pros and cons list. I'm gonna give my price target for British Petroleum. And lastly, I'm gonna share my strategy on how I'm trading BP. If you're new to my channel, I do videos on stock analysis, investing, as well as personal finance. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Also like the video at any time. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Now to the content. Now, if we look at BP stock price over the last five years, it really was trading sideways for about three years before 2020, at which point it declined precipitously with a stark, um, decrease in demand and a glut in supply. Now that has uh, definitely changed. Um, so if you could see before the pandemic, the price was trading around $35, went down to 17 at the low, dipped a little bit more before heading into 2021 in the uh, was October timeframe. And then um, when I posted my last video on BP, they're trading around $25. Now they're 26, about a dollar, dollar more. If you remember on the last video, I posted a video on oil prices over time, comparatively to their stock price. They're tr currently at around $70 a barrel. If you look at them just on here, um, they typically trade when they're about $70 a barrel, more so in the um, uh, $40, uh, $40 range. But let's look at their oil price versus stock price here. Um, so you can just kind of see as oil prices have fluctuated, you'll see um, increases and decreases in the stock price. Um, oil prices are on the top, stock prices on the bottom. And you can just see that oil prices have completely recovered. Um, you know, they're actually higher now than they were pre-pandemic. What you do have on this problem is you still have a lower demand. You still have issues with, um, you know, uncertainty that is causing issues with this and, and definitely have had decreases in capex as well. But just from this stock chart alone, comparing the oil price and stock price, you can see that there is some correlation here. We definitely want to pay attention to that. And I do think that this can get back up into that $30, $40 range um, if oil prices stay um, in that 70 and increase into the $80 to $100 range, if that is possible. But I definitely think $80 oil is possible on the short, at least in, on the horizon that we're on. Um, looking at the stock performance versus some of its peers in the last year time period, BP has been the under, underperformer here, only increasing about 13% since this time last year. Um, uh, Chevron, uh, CVX, uh, up about 17.76. Um, Royal Dutch Shell at 26, which is actually a better, probably one of the better um, comparisons than uh, the American oil oil majors um, at 26.3. And then XOM, Exxon is kind of in a league of its own right now at 42.94. And this is um, just since this time last year. So if you want to look at since pandemic started, it's a little bit of a different stock chart, but just from this time last year, they've, they are all, all tracking fairly similar. So they're not moving independently of each other. Um, although you can see about, uh, you know, nine months, eight months ago, you know, while everybody else was dropping in October timeframe, uh, you know, BP was just dropping like a rock, right? So BP has been the lagger consistently in this, in this group. I do think it just it's going to take something positive for them to kind of break through that because um, they're you know i think they're outside of that margin of where they should be trading in comparison to their peers for sure hey i hope you're enjoying the video thus far if you are please hit that thumbs up button it helps me out a lot now back to your content all right so jumping into revenue for british petroleum we can see for fiscal year 2020 that $180 billion in revenue the year before that, $277 billion the year before that, $297. So there's definitely been a downtrend in the last three years, um, but the big sharp decline here of 35% is really due to the pandemic. Um, you can see there's a drop in gross margin, pro, gross margin as well as EBITDA margin. 
One of the things I want to point out here on quarterly, um, well, let me scroll over to where I'm supposed to be. Um, in the last quarter, they reported $34 billion. They actually missed um, earnings by, I'll show it right here, $29.73 billion. Um, but they did beat on their earnings per share of um, 78%, so 35 cent um, beat. So almost a uh, 100% beat there on earnings per share, but a huge, huge miss, um, damn near 40% um, less than what they were than what they're expecting to actually show. So that's a really big hit. What we're gonna wanna look for in future quarters is to actually start getting back to what um, what their ex analyst has is, is been predicting. So you can see back here for their second quarter of 2019, they had $72 billion, and for the first quarter of 2019, $65 billion. So we're only going to see something probably in the 60 low or mid mid 50 billion. Uh, like $55 billion to $65 billion range for the next quarter. Um, otherwise, we're going to probably see some, some negative action here on their price. Um, I do believe they can hit it. There's definitely the demand. Now can they execute? That's definitely the question. If we go back to full year um, 2021, that's what we're wanting to look at. So if we go and we look at earnings estimates for that, they're looking at $227 billion um, for um, full year 2021. That kind of takes them back to that 2017 range, um, not near not near the 2018 or the 2019. They'll still be off by about $50 billion or almost a whole, you know, yeah, a whole $50 billion off of that. But what is good um, is there's they're still showing a little bit of growth here. I think what you really, what you do see here in the analyst um, uh, estimates is a pretty big divergence between the, the low and the high. So about $140 billion um, between these two analysts. So that's pretty big difference. Um, I'm hoping as we see some more quarters come up, you'll see these start to, to, to converge a little bit closer. Um, there'll be a less little less room for margin of error here. This is um, quite substantial for for the size of what BP is. So <clears throat> we're going to want to see that. Um, so when they do report earnings next, we're going to be wanting to look at um, see them exceeding that 220 um, 27 billion full year guidance. Um, that'll definitely be a positive thing for the stock. And we're going to want them to get back to their quarterly revenue of somewhere in that 55 to 65 billion dollar range. And if they're able to get to that 2019 72 billion dollar range, then we're going to be really, really in a healthy spot. All right. So next up, I want to talk about free cash flow. If we take our cash flow operations minus capital expenditures, that gives us free cash flow. So if we look at fiscal year 2020. We minus this 12.1 minus the 12.3, get negative free cash flow in 2020, not good. Um, prior, prior year, about 10 billion. Next year after that, six, then two, then negative. So inconsistent free cash flow here. Don't like to see that decreasing. Um, overall, probably not a great thing. All right, so moving on over to the balance sheet. If we go down to total current assets at 70, $72.9 billion. Going down to total current liabilities, we're at 59.7. So uh, they definitely, current li uh, current assets is greater than current liabilities. I like that. So overall, overall good thing there. If we look at their total liabilities, um, their liabilities haven't increased all that substantially, actually decreased in the last year. So I think that's a good thing. So, um, but their long-term debt has definitely increased by about six billion dollars. If you look at this line item here, so, and their deferred tax liability went down. So, there's some offsets here, but this long-term debt has definitely been increasing in the last several years. You want to keep an eye on that, as this is, um, if this is sustaining any sort of dividend, this is not good for the stock. All right, so going over our pros and cons list, I believe BP is currently undervalued relative to their peers. If we look at oil prices, we think that I think that oil prices are definitely going to get to $80.
could get as high as $100 by the end of the year. Currently, WTI, Brent are trading in that low to $70 range right now. And I think with inflation, as well as other pressures like demand increasing, supply staying the same, we could see that get into the $80 to $100 range. Global economies are definitely opening up. Look around you. There's definitely economies around the world that are staying shut down and closing, but there's a lot of pressure to reopen. And I, can, I think that trend is just going to continue. On the production side, that just remains modest. BP's or OPEC's done a very good job, I believe, um, kind of managing through the pandemic. They did a very terrible job at the very, very beginning. That's kind of what caused you know oil prices to go negative. But they've done fairly well since then, since they made that hiccup. The ESG transformation could turn BP into a long-term play. That's essentially BP going out and saying they want to be an energy company in the long run, and they're going to be less dependent on oil. That is a good thing when we transition over into the con side. However, it is not a short-term play solution. This is going to be a long-term play. So if you're owning BP for a very long time, um, that number five is definitely relevant to you. On OPEC could open up productions. Now we're going on the con side. If OPEC opens up production, it's going to increase um, supply, decrease the price of oil. So that's not going to be a good thing. Um, you know, this happens every year. This, or this happens all the time when when uh, OPEC company countries stop talking to each other. Um, so right now they're currently meeting month every month, and that's good. As long as that communication is open, I think there's going to be more compliance on uh, production. And that's going to help keep oil prices pretty stable in the short term and hopefully drive up oil prices for BP into that $80 to $100 range. On another con is resurgence in COVID-19. That's just going to suppress demand, cause it, um, you know, supply is going to be out there still. It's just going to decrease the price of oil. Uh, the next one is EV legislation could affect the long-term consumption of oil. That's just going to decrease long-term oil consumption, meaning there's going to be less money to be made in the oil business. So those revenues year over year will start to decline if that holds up to be true. Is oil going consumption going to zero? Absolutely not. There's other things like plastics that they're going to be used in. Um, do Are all vehicles going to be EV? I don't think that's going to happen in the next 10 years. Um, just based off of all vehicles, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Long-term debt. Definitely a concern, especially if you're a long-term uh, shareholder. They really need to rein that in. They just keep increasing their long-term debt quite substantially year over year. They need to rein that in, and that's definitely something you need to pay attention to. All right, so I'm going to reinstate my price target for BP for this year. I do believe that they can hit $30 for sure by the end of the year. Um, you know, Take that with a grain of salt. The things that I mentioned on the pro side have to be, have to be true in order for that to, to happen. On the 40 side, that's pretty ambitious. At this point, you would need to see a pretty stark rise. But if that does happen, you could see an upside potential in the 15 to 50, 15 to 56 percent range, with a downside risk of about 20 percent. So there is considerable risk here, um, but there is, uh, you know, a nice potential return. My trading strategy for BP is quite simple. I entered into this position thinking it's relatively undervalued to its peers. That still remains true today. At my current uh, investment, I will probably look to divest it in about nine months from now. Um, I think by the end of the year, we're going to see some good capital appreciation at a $30 range. I do have some calls out there um, way out of the money uh, at $40 calls for January of 2022. I don't know if those are going to hit, but I just, you know, put a flyer on those. And I do own the stock outright, um, in, and I think I bought it around the $21, $22 range. So um, I'm really eyeing that $30 range. We'll see what happens, uh, but I'm pretty confident in where they're at right now. And we'll see what happens. As a reminder, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Also hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching. Frank Finance, out.